Thank you. All right, I feel overdressed. Um, the last couple weeks have been insane for me. Um, anyone heard of Basecamp? <laughs> so this last uh, week ago, I was in Chicago. We were launching the new version of the new Basecamp. <clears throat> we were all heads down going crazy. The entire company, we are over 30 people now, 37 signals. We were over 30 people, all in Chicago, heads down, working together. It was fantastic. I loved it. Um, but you can bet that we weren't building any new features. Okay? We were working on the little things. And these little things are the things that matter. And that's what I want to talk about today. So first of all, you've probably all been in this situation where a friend or a coworker or a random person on the street approaches you and says, so what's the big deal about Ruby? What, why is Ruby so big? What's, what's the hype? What's, what's going on? And, and so you, you come back with the pat answers, right? You might mention, well, Ruby's got blocks. And, you know, you mumble something about iteration and enumeration and closures and anonymous functions. And you'll you maybe spout something about everything's an object in Ruby, right? Pure object oriented. Even the numbers are objects, and it's just so fantastic. You talk about mix-ins, right? It's like multiple inheritance, but be more powerful because it's actually orthogonal to inheritance. And, and it, you know, you can do so many cool things. And, and then you, you mentioned you know, garbage collection, and you mentioned exception handling, and you mentioned that it's dynamic, and you aren't quite sure you know what to say about that. So you move on, and you say, well, it's interpreted. And, and your friend is at this point just saying, yeah, okay, yeah. Show me a language that doesn't have garbage collection these days, right? Everyone's doing it. Exception handling is really common. Um, Dynamic is a buzzword that's everywhere. Interpreted, blah blah blah. Um, and he'll say, "Well, you know, you want objects. Well, small talk has objects. Small talk has blocks. Um, Scala has traits, which are like the mix-ins. You know, you're not telling me anything new. Tell me, tell me, really, what is the deal with Ruby? Like, why are you so passionate about it? And I hope we're all passionate about it, right? What is it that makes us?" stay at potentially inconvenient hotels and to travel potentially inconvenient distances and to sit in potentially potentially uncomfortable chairs for a long time. I mean, at least these chairs are padded. They have that. But seriously, are we nuts? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? Who said that? Yeah. Yeah. Nuts. <laughs> um, we're nuts. But we're passionate. I mean, that's what it is. But what is it that makes us so passionate? What is the key here? What's the point? Now, the problem was when we were talking to our friend, or the random stranger, or whoever it was, we were, we were talking about the banner features, right? This is Ruby. But the problem with the banner features is that they aren't, they aren't what make us passionate about the language. They aren't what make us passionate about anything. These are the features that are designed for headlines, right? They capture someone's interest, they pique someone's curiosity, and they're enough to get someone in. But they aren't what actually does the work. I mean, what is it that makes Ruby unique? What is it that makes Ruby stand out? If every other language is doing the same sorts of things feature for feature, why is Ruby so incredible? Why do we care enough to come here? It's the little things, right? Blocks aren't what make us stay with Ruby. Garbage collection isn't the big deal. It's once we're in, it's the things that we can do with blocks, right? It's it's the way blocks streamline our workflow. It's the way garbage collection removes all the little nitty gritty of memory management. I mean, it's it's the little things that really matter. It's the pixie dust, right, of of language design. How many of you have seen Peter Pan in one incarnation or another? I imagine most people have, right? If you have kids, you've probably seen it multiple times. But pixie dust is this amazing stuff. You sprinkle it on, you have a happy thought, and that's all it takes. Suddenly you're flying. That's what these little things are in Ruby or whatever else we're doing. It's a little thing that you sprinkle in, and the customer, your user, you bring a happy thought to the table, and suddenly they're flying. And once you're flying, you're hooked, okay? Flight is awesome, 
And if you can do it without an airplane, that is even more awesome. You want that pixie dust. You want that experience of flight because that's what hooks, that's what hooks them. That's what hooks people. It gets them to stay. Now, I am not an expert on the psychology of the Ruby community at large. I don't know feature for feature what people prefer and how they use things, but I'm an expert on me. I know how I use Ruby. I know what took me and what keeps me engaged in Ruby. So I'd like to talk to you about a few of the things in Ruby that have hooked and engaged me, that have kept me fascinated by Ruby for 10 years now. Um, and while I'm doing this, I would like you to be thinking in your own minds about the little things of Ruby that, that have captured your imagination, that you use the heck out of every day and probably take for granted, don't even realize. Think about those things. One of the first things I, I want to mention is this. I love the heck out of this thing, okay? I may not use it every day, but when I use it, I love it. How many of you ever used this data end construct? A few, okay, awesome. I, I love it. I mean, you can throw configuration at the bottom of a, of a simple script. You can throw a test fixture at the bottom of a simple application. You can do all kinds of really awesome stuff with that, and I love that. It's such a little thing, but it, it captures my imagination. Another one, who's, who's ever done this? Yeah. yeah, okay. This is used all over, like Rails, for instance, does this all the time. This is actually a few different patterns all wrapped up into one slide. You've got the lazy initialization with the or equals, and you've got the begin-end treating it as a single expression. I love that. Rails, the Ruby is so amazing. It's, everything's an expression, including begin-end. So you can use this to, you know, basically initialize or memorize a function, a method. Awesome. Love it. The postfix modifiers. Okay, obviously I didn't list all of them. I used the heck out of rescue. I didn't even mention that one here. But like if and till, those are awesome. I love how they peak. Something that would otherwise be complex and multi-line and require more mental processes to scan. It takes it, it condenses it into one line. Now obviously you can abuse this. But don't, right? Duh, just use it wisely. Um, another thing, the implicit begin at the beginning of, at the beginning of a method. Can you imagine how frustrating it would be is if you wanted to use exception handling in Ruby? If you had to explicitly declare a begin end inside of a def end, how dumb would that be? But it's not that way. They, you know, Mats, Mats I'm sure was the one who did this, or it wasn't him, it was one of his cohorts. <coughs> Brilliant, right? So, so simple, so little, but it makes such a difference in the, day, the way you use Ruby day to day. Implicit return is another huge one. Um, so, you know, this is kind of a stylistic thing. Some people prefer to put an explicit return at the bottom of a method. Um, I, I kind of go back and forth, but for a simple, you know, attribute kind of method, this is incredibly useful. I love it. And I have to admit, I, I came from a C background. I, I love the, the nitty gritty stuff. The primary operator has had my heart for almost two decades. <laughs> and I'm so, I'm so happy. <laughs> I was so happy to find that it was in Ruby because I loved everything else about Ruby and to have the ternary operator, I was so happy. I love it. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> optional parentheses, right? Optional parentheses are awesome. Yes. It lets you declare beautiful DSLs in Ruby. I mean, Lisp doesn't have optional parentheses. <laughs> uh, I love this, I'm just giving it that. But you know, with Ruby, you can take away a lot of the language just by removing parentheses. It's beautiful. I love it. Such a little thing, but it makes such a difference. And if you were to tell that friend of yours why you're passionate about Ruby, and you said, because you can leave parentheses out. You know, most people would be like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool. This is another awesome one, parallel assignment. C didn't have this, okay, not in any meaningful sense. If you wanted to do swap two variables in C, how many of you have done that in C? How many of you have written a function in C specifically to swap two variables? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. And Ruby, it's a one layer, it's a no brainer. I love that. Such a nice touch. And again, if you were to tell someone, I love Ruby because it has parallel assignment, 
I can swap a variable in one line. You know, it's, it's a little thing that you don't appreciate until you've used it. It's not a headline. I love this. This is one of my favorite patterns in Ruby. Using modules to extend objects. I, this is an especially powerful pattern with exceptions. You've got an exception that's raised within some kind of context and you want to capture that context. So when the, the exception is rescued, you, you can do something meaningful with it. Well, you just extend the exception, add your context, and re-raise it. I mean, it's beautiful. I love that. Last one, I love this too. I use this every day, no exaggeration, especially in Rails where you might get a list of records back from the database and you want to build a, an ID to record mapping in memory. This is your friend, right? The inject is such a powerful pattern and just being able to you know, feed it a hash and build a hash that way. It's wonderful. Um, and then truthiness. I love truthiness, okay? This threw me when I came from C, right? Because zero was false in C, and it's true in Ruby, right? Very confusing, but once you understand the rules, it's beautiful, because you can do stuff like this. Some people get up in arms because they say, if, if you have a Boolean predicate, it should return a, bo return a Boolean. I'll, I'm a little looser on that. I say, if you have a Boolean predicate, it's okay if it returns truth, or what's the opposite of truth? False? Okay. Lies. Okay, good. <laughs> True or lies. I like that. So in this case, it could return null or nil or string, potentially, which evaluates to true or false. Truth and falsity. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. I thought I liked truth and lies. That's pretty good. Last one here. Pure docs are awesome. I love, well, yeah, I mean, it's not an original Ruby. None of these are really original with Ruby, right? But Ruby has them. I love that you can chain here docs, you know? It, it's not the most um, aesthetically appealing thing, but I just love that you can take this huge chunk of text and throw it in right there in line. Wonderful. So, how about you? What, what do you guys got? What are, what are the little things you appreciate every day? Let's take a few. Yes? I gotta repeat it. Optional parentheses. Optional parentheses. Preach it, brother. <laughs> love it. Sorry, yes, David. Uh, a little simpler than your or equals begin, which I love when we start using. I'm a big fan of x equals if condition. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I have done that. Where you treat the, act, the if as an expression. I've done that with case statements, even. It's great. Yes? Auto loading. I'm sorry, what? Auto loading. Auto loading. Yes. Well, that's great. Yes? Yes, exactly. It's it's beautiful, isn't it? Brilliant, brilliant execution on that. Oh yes, on here docs. Sorry. On here docs, you can actually put a comma after that and add more arguments. Okay? As many as you want. Even more even more here docs. Okay? You, you can even do like SQL dot blah or like yes. pass it to another function. So you can do like SQL dot squish if you wanted to remove all the you can do it. That yeah, that initial little introduction to the here doc can be treated as if it were the entire string. It's, it's you, you can add a G sub and remove the the front spaces. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You can call any method on it because because it's a string. That's what it is. Okay, we'll do one more because hands are going up all over now. I love that. Okay, let's go here. I love your hat. Splat. That was actually on my list of things to do originally, and it didn't make the cut because I couldn't think of a good illustration for it. But Splat is awesome. I love that. Thank you. I'm so excited that you guys are passionate about this too. I love that it's these little things, right, that make us passionate about Ruby. So, what's the takeaway? What, what, do we, what do we learn from this? That the fact that we have someone's being persistent. Sorry. So, I just want to point this out, not as a CoffeeScript is just like Ruby and also cool, but as a CoffeeScript really is a lot nicer to use than JavaScript because every single one of these things that we said that I say, I love that about Ruby, CoffeeScript has an equivalent thing and it's so 
cool about CoffeeScript, not because CoffeeScript is as cool as Ruby, but because it's so much better than JavaScript. <laughs> I'll repeat it for the sake of the camera, but basically CoffeeScript has all of this too, and CoffeeScript is awesome, and I totally agree with that. And I would even go so far as to say that CoffeeScript is as awesome as Ruby. It is amazing. And so much better than JavaScript, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so what's, what's the takeaway? What can we walk away from with this? What's the lesson we can learn by looking to Ruby as the example? I mean, all of us are doing something with Ruby or we wouldn't be here, even if it's just tinkering on the side. But how many of us are actually using Ruby professionally? I love it, okay? So many of us are using Ruby professionally, which means we are writing stuff in Ruby that others are going to use, either the Ruby product itself or some derivative thereof, okay? So what is it about Ruby that we love in that context? It's not that we're out there writing Ruby code for the sake of writing Ruby code, right? I mean, sometimes you'll sit down and pound a little script just for the therapeutic value of it, but usually you're out there writing Ruby code because it's a tool that gets out of your way and does what you need it to. When I am in the mode writing Ruby code, I'm not thinking about Ruby code. I'm not thinking of syntax and, and the interpreter and these features. I'm just, it's fluent, right? It's just flowing. And the language is out of the way. With our own projects, what, what do we have? I mean, what, let's go further. What, what lessons can we learn from Ruby? Ruby does a lot of things well, but it does two things really well, right? First, it piques curiosity really well. People are curious about Ruby. Secondly, it inspires worship. <laughs> At the very least, it, it inspires loyalty, right? But either way, people are passionate about it. They're either curious or passionate. And if they're passionate, they're either for or against. Either people haven't heard about Ruby, or they love or hate it. That's really where it is. I haven't talked to very many people who are ambivalent about Ruby. So what does that tell us about our own products? Well, one of the things that Ruby has is a skeleton, right? It's those features that we told our friend at the beginning. It's all it's the blocks and the, all these things. It's got a very solid skeleton that makes a good headline, right? It's, it's the frame that everything else hangs out of. And without that, the language falls apart. <coughs> Obviously, you need something strong like that. The headline sells papers, right? That's what you hear. Headlines sell newspapers. But without something journalistic underneath, that's, the headlines are only going to sell one paper per person at most. So you need something more, like this isn't enough. The other half of the story is the polish, right? You, you need to put the flesh on the bones, you need to polish that until it gleams. That's, it's those little details, this is the little stuff. This is, this is the lesson I think gets ignored more, than, more often. I, I, I'm in the presence of brilliant people right now. I have no doubt about that. And I have no doubt that many of you have already thought long and hard about the same topic and have probably come up with better solutions than I have. But it bears repeating. This is important stuff. The little stuff is what makes the difference. But you can't build only on the little stuff. You need both, right? How many of you ever used an application that was all gleam and no skeleton? A few, like I have. It's one of those where you're like, yeah, wow, this is slick, this is pretty. Next, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for you. But the same thing, like you can have an app that is all skeleton and no polish. Get, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you don't want to build, okay? You can look at this in either of two ways. Either it's all skeleton and no polish, Right, it's all big features, you know, this octopus arms and a robot dinosaur with a satellite dish. Those are the banner features, okay? Or you can look at it as having too much polish, right? Someone wanted to pack this thing with all kinds of cool things, but didn't really have a purpose. This is the kind of monster you would fight once, because after the first time, you're like, meh, you know, it doesn't do anything for me. In the end, we each of us need to go back to our problem domain and build the ruby of that domain. We need to build the tools that will get out of our customer's way, that will inspire loyalty in them, that will pique the curiosity of people from outside, 
Those are the lessons I think we can learn from Ruby that we can take wherever we are, whatever we're working on. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, try to build the Ruby of your domain. Thank you very much. I don't know how much there is question-wise. Um, five minutes of it. I don't know how much anyone has questions for this, but if anyone has a question. Sorry, you're right, you're up in the corner. My hands. <laughs> I have a bamboo pad and pen, and I'm an aspiring artist, so. No, the bamboo pad lets you draw directly. I have like Pixelmator is the application I use, because I can't afford Photoshop. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. The question is, um, well, first confirm that I do woodworking some. I actually do wood carving, and I haven't actually done that in a while. Kids tend to suck up a lot of free time out. But his question was, do I have any tools from that domain that kind of would be a, the ruby of woodworking? And honestly, every tool that I've used in wood carving is like that, because every tool is designed to extend your hand. So you're in there carving, and you're not thinking about how you're holding the chisel, unless you're just starting, in which case that's all you're thinking about. Um, but you're thinking about the wood, and the, what's inside the wood, and what you want to come out of the wood, and so that you know, the chisel, or the knife, or whatever it is you're using, really is out of the way and unobtrusive. Um, I, any tool that doesn't do that quickly gets discarded for one that, that does that, really. Yes? Have I ever fought with Ruby, or has it ever fought with Ruby, or is it ever smooth? Is it always just smooth sailing of bliss? Uh, <laughs> I, I fight with Ruby probably on a daily basis. Ruby is not perfect. I mean, I think every single one of us can name numerous pet warts of Ruby that drive us insane. The important thing is not that Ruby is perfect, but that Ruby has enough to compensate for those warts, that we're, we're able to forgive it. Um, the other thing is, there was a time where I used to go language shopping, and every few months I would choose some new language and do a maze in it or something. Um, and I quickly learned that there is no silver bullet, right? Every language is going to have different warts, and so you're just kind of trading one thing for another. But yeah, I totally fight with Ruby all the time. Yeah, I think all of us do. Thank you.